corporate media and the establishment types are in complete meltdown over Donald Trump getting elected in such a landslide. They have no idea what's going to happen, and they want to pretend like they have all of the answers. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Basha Capello's had a couple of uh, political pundits on her show, one from the conservative and one from the liberal side. And one of them is Bill Marneau, a former finance minister. And she asked him point blank about what he, he feels like the election in the United States tells them. And you're not even going to believe this regurgitated stuff. But fundamentally, I thought that the challenge that the, uh, you know, the incumbent, effectively, Harris was fake, facing was inflation. And that, that's a, a pretty important challenge for any incumbent government these days. So His win was so overwhelming. I mean, that is what shocked me the most. His win was so overwhelming because inflation was not the only issue. It wasn't about just the economy. It was about the woke. I mean, these are issues. These are hot-button issues. Uh, immigration the economy and far left ideology were all hot button issues. And we can see with absolute certainty that the overwhelming majority supported the Republican platform. Now we are going to have to put Justin Trudeau and his far left ideology up against this Donald Trump, who now has absolute control of the reins, meaning that he has the popular vote. He has the, the electoral college, both houses. I mean, he's going to have all kinds of people around him who are willing to execute his his legacy because he's a second term, right? So he won't be focused on what people will talk about him when he's not when he's no longer around. And he wants people to say, Donald Trump come in, the economy was in a horrible position. And when he left, we were all rich. I mean, that's basically what he's looking to do. So he will be focusing primarily on making the American economy better. The problem that we have is that our prime minister is not a very good politician. Our prime minister is very childish, very immature. And when given an opportunity to talk about Donald Trump, to express his views on Donald Trump, he says one thing, then he says a different thing. We're working with uh, President Trump once again to strengthen North American economic opportunities for uh, the middle class. I mean, he's sitting there, Justin Trudeau, having drinks. And there was the leader of England, the leader of France. And I, I couldn't quite see who the other fellow was. And this is how he's talking to them. Like he's in some sort of high school cafeteria or he's, at, you know, in his basement and all of his friends are around him. He's too wrapped up in, in his echo chamber. So that's the childishness that I was referring to. He can't help himself. The people around him tell him what to think and he gets all giddy and he gets all jovial because he thinks that he's by talking behind somebody else's back, he's going to gain favor or points or, you know, popularity contest. Now, those of you that might not understand when he says two, two faced, what he's calling the guy is deceitful. He's saying that he says one thing to his face and then he says another thing when his back is turned. And I am absolutely certain that when President Trump said that or President-elect Trump said that, he was attempting to insult him. And I don't blame him. I mean, this is the kind of person who wants to call him, qualify himself a world leader. Now he's alienated the United States. He's alienated India. Well, he's cozied up to China. I don't know that necessarily this is the kind of person that should be in, in the seat trying to deal with our largest economic both competitor and the company that the country that we send most of our stuff to i don't think that he's the right choice kind of necessitate a, a different approach on stuff that has been ideologically valuable to the government absolutely we are in a completely different situation i mean the government has an economic update coming up i think at the end of november and i would recommend that they if they've written it they rewrite it and they look at it <laughs> and make sure that it i mean we've got two trains coming at us we've got the tariff war that's coming at us 
um, from Trump. There's only so much we can control there. And as Bill said, there's things that we can put on the table and we've got to hit back hard and retaliate with our own tariffs. But the other is within our control and that's our domestic economic policies. And we know what Trump's going to do. He's going to lower the business tax rate to 15%. Our combined federal provincial is 38%. There's no carbon tax in the US. We have to think about how do we lower emissions without a carbon tax? The Americans do it. How could we do it? We've just put a, a, a cap on production in our oil and gas sector. And it's, we're the only country in the world to do that, which makes energy more expensive. Trump is saying he's going to deregulate in all kinds of sectors to make energy cheaper as an input for businesses and homes. So we, we just increased the new capital gains tax inclusion rate, which is a drain on innovators, small businesses, startups. All of these things that we've been pursuing, which is a higher tax agenda, right from the carbon tax to the capital gains tax, is a drain on productivity and it's a drain on investment. And you need to understand that, right? drain on productivity and a drain on investment. Now we're not going to be getting involved in a tariff war with the United States. What they don't want is products that are made somewhere else. They want their stuff to say made in the USA. They don't want to be selling it domestically. They're not prepared for that yet. They're not looking to export much. They're trying to stabilize their own economy. They're trying to build the middle class, which is how they got to the levels that they got to in the first place. Everybody any you know, any grade first grader knows this with basic economics. So I think that she's just a little bit overstating that. However, you did hear her list off all of those taxes that Canadian manufacturers and Canadian stores and Canadian purchasers are up against because all of that comes to the bottom line of your pocket. So the manufacturer adds it onto the cost. He doesn't eat it, not like this idea that they're trying to sell you that everybody's just going to be holding hands. The corporations that are in bed with the liberal government are always looking for the special car votes. Those of us that are trying to get businesses off the ground, those of us that want to be targeting markets in the United States, because they do have quite a few, a larger population, are going to be dealing with those kinds of in, uh, taxes, those kinds of taxes. And then you add on top of that another tax of a tariff. So it's literally easier for the company to go into the, for the person, for the corporation, whatever it may be, to go into the United States and set up a building make the same product in the United States and ship it back to Canada. That's the problem with all of these taxes, especially when you start talking about the capital gains tax. So all of that money that's already in the country is just simply going to cross over to the border when they can do it for cast the pay taxes at a third, I mean, 38 to 40 to 15. That's without talking about any of the other taxes that the carbon tax is adding on to the cost of the manufacturing and the cost of the transportation appreciate that the liberal government is taxing, uh, taxing us into poverty so they can tell themselves that they're being carbon neutral. There are a hundred ways to go carbon neutral and we are a country that has a very small population. So we should not be focusing on that right now. We should be focusing on other things that will make this nation great. And that's the problem with the way that things have been running for the last 15 years. That's the problem with the far left. They don't have any economic policies that are worth talking about and they don't have any vision for the future other than do as I say, not as I do. So we have, you know, a lot of concerns as Canadians and 90% of them are going to be removed if we can simply get the Liberal Party to get out of the way. And if they were trying to do what was best for Canada, they would understand that what I'm saying is true and they would simply just get out of the way. I mean, we currently have an environment minister who just flew to Azerbaijan. I mean, they just need to get out of the way. They need to stop telling themselves that their ideology is going to be swallowed by the whole wide world because they have handlers in Davos that have told them that. But the people don't agree with any of them. And without the people, those corporations have nothing. They have nothing. They have nothing. They can't sit around in, in a circle and just sell it to each other doesn't work like that that doesn't stimulate any economy and there's any of a thousand countries in this earth or a hundred countries on this earth that can point to how you have some people with money and everybody else is flat broke and even the people with money are not that wealthy simply because the economic policies of socialism do not function correctly and as a nation we need to be pushing Canada's next step right now should be forcing an election 
We need to be getting a new prime minister in place, a new diplomatic staff in place so that we can start to deal with our largest trading partner so that we can capitalize on all of the uh, policy changes that they're going to be making so that we can make our own country stronger, so that we can make our own country wealthier, so that we can strengthen our own middle class alongside of them while they have those policies. And if you're just listening to this and you're wondering how this is going to impact you, me, and Bob, and you know, the, just the normal, everyday, ordinary human being, well, those tariffs mean that they're going to be selling it inside of Canada for less money. So they'll lose money, but that doesn't bother me. They shouldn't have been trying to rob us in the first place. Knowing those products will either stop being manufactured in Canada or they will be sold dirt cheap because the United States won't be a viable market to them because of all the taxes that the liberal government imposes on them. So you can see how in, in some ways it's going to benefic be beneficial. And if we can get the local taxes to be taken off so that these companies can send their product into the United States at a competitive rate, that still helps the Canadian people because now these local taxes are taken off and we can buy the product at a competitive price as well. Which, of course undercuts and bottoms out the entire inflation, which might bother the bank. It's not going to bother me and you. And it's certainly not going to bother anybody who's trying to, you know, join the middle class, as uh, Justin Trudeau likes to always say. However, we can't really capitalize any of it on any of it as so long as we have a far left government in place who refuses to understand the reality of the economic problems that we are facing. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.